Well, hi, Zenia, and welcome to the Rebuilding My Health Radio podcast. I'm excited to have you here today to talk about your personal health story. Hi, Casey. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited to be here today. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I really, when I um, saw your story, I really felt like it's important to bring it to listeners to kind of learn, um, you know, how you came back from multiple autoimmune conditions, uh, the, some of the lessons learned along the way, and you know, maybe what, yeah, what you can share with them about, you know, how, what you would do differently and all and all that and lessons learned. All right, so kind of let's go back to when everything started. What health challenges were you experiencing, and what did that look like for you? Yeah, so I think everything started around the beginning of 2018. So that must be around six years ago now, if I'm counting correctly. Um, and it kind of came, I mean, I want to say it came out of nowhere. Looking back, it probably didn't come out of nowhere, but it certainly felt like that at the time. Um, I was working a really stressful, high pressure job. So I thought a lot of the symptoms I was experiencing were coming because it just, it was just a lot of work. It was long hours. It wasn't a lot of street sleep. It was just generally really stressful. So to me, it felt a lot like simply being overworked, needing a bit of a break, um, having a feeling of like being burned out. Like I felt exhausted all the time. I felt like my concentration wasn't really great. So I was like experiencing um, mind fog, things like that, just feeling generally out of energy and um, being in a kind of a weird mood. Like I, I didn't feel like I, yeah, there wasn't much to laugh about during that time. And I'm usually a person who's like kind of happy, like joyful. And I didn't have that for a long time, which really felt like I wasn't really being me for a while. And then that kind of progressed until one day I went to the doctor and I said, you know, like something is up, but I'm really not feeling well. Um, they asked me if I was experiencing a lot of anxiety. And I was thinking, well, obviously, because I'm not feeling well, so that makes me anxious, you know? So at the time I didn't really understand that question. Um, now that I'm working a lot with people who have autoimmune diseases, this seems to be a question that comes up a lot. So the first thing that doctors are thinking is like, oh, anxiety, you know, it sounds like a person who experiences anxiety, but like, that's not a surprise when you're dealing with a lot of health struggles. So that's actually something that, yeah, I don't know. I find really disappointing that that keeps coming up, you know, <laughs> as like the cause of someone feeling bad while this might actually be a symptom of you know dealing with a lot of health issues can cause a person anxiety that's only normal so um yeah so it took a, a little while um to get some more tests they did find out eventually that something was wrong and then i was diagnosed with my first autoimmune condition which is autoimmune hepatitis mm -hmm. and then a little further down the line i was already di diagnosed with two more so i also have a um, little less long condition is called PBC, um, primary biliary cirrhosis, which is a condition of the gallbladder and Crohn's disease, which is a autoimmune condition of the gut. So a whole <laughs> bag full of baggage. <laughs> wow. You... Yeah. Those, yeah, those are some significant diagnoses for sure. And all gut related. You've got um, yeah, the liver, the gallbladder and kind of Crohn's is more intestinal, but exactly. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So, and did you get all those diagnoses kind of at once or just over, like, it was just kind of like bang, 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 like, <laughs> yeah. So the first two were like, actually all of them happened like about two years apart. So it was, um, it's possible that they were already there earlier, but kind of overlooked. So that's especially how I felt with my second diagnosis of PVC. I'm pretty sure it was there before, but um, from my own symptoms, it was very much kind of aligned with the symptoms you would have if you had that disease. But at the beginning, it wasn't really taken that seriously from the doctors. And then later it came out, yeah, that's also there. And then also <laughs> you have Crohn's disease, surprise. So <laughs> Wow. Were you, ha were you having a lot of digestive issues? 
Uh, yeah, but I, the, the thing is, I felt, feel like I had those all my life. So I would always joke about, you know, my sensitive stomach, my sensitive mm-hmm. gut, like having this like gut feel. Mine was really strong whenever something was up, whenever I was stressed or uh, anxious or just really busy. I could always feel it in my gut first. And that I, I thought that was just me. So it's just the type of person that I am. But then turns out uh, there was actually something going on. And I feel like that's something many people could maybe relate to because gut issues are so common today that we feel like that's just normal. That's just life. But um, there might be a little more to it in some cases. For sure. For sure. Yeah. I hear that a lot as well. You know, someone just saying, oh, I just have a really, you know, sensitive stomach or whatever, but you know, we kind of just take it as like, oh yeah. Oh, my mom had a sense of stomach. So I do. And you know, it's just genetic or it runs in our family or whatever, but um, there may be something really going on. And there are a lot of things that can go wrong with your gut. Yes. (laughs) Yeah. And I think with most autoimmune diseases, so the, the consensus these days, especially in functional medicine is that most of them actually start in the gut. So if you do have gut issues, the chance that you're going to get an autoimmune disease later on is a lot higher than if you never had gut issues in your life. So it's definitely something to take serious. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I think every single, just about every single story that I have done that I've captured has had a gut element. Like yeah. some, they've had to fix their gut to heal from from other things that was part of their story. So, um, so did you, you know, kind of start in the conventional medicine system trying to get better and, and, you know, what was, what were you seeing in terms of progress or not progress with conventional medicine? Yeah. So I was definitely starting there. I feel like I went in really trustful and hopeful because my parents are both also practitioners, so they both work in conventional medicine. Oh, and okay. I, so I, I kind of grew up like really believing in this system, trusting my doctors and um, assuming that they're always right. And especially that they always have all the answers. They know exactly what's happening. And I kind of found out during that process that they are also just human and they can't possibly have all the answers, especially in the field of autoimmune disease. There, Unfortunately, there are so many things that we just don't know. And I think the general expectation is like, like it was for me kind of going in trusting, like putting so much trust in the doctor that they don't always feel like they can also say that they don't have the answer. So I think it's like a very like a big theme that keeps coming up they can't allow themselves to show any weaknesses because then they lose all credibility and the patient really starts to then also question like the whole the whole process of being like treated by a doctor if they feel like there's any kind of uncertainty about what's happening but the truth is that with autoimmune disease there are so many questions and they also They do their best, obviously, but they simply don't have all the answers. And that's something that took me a long time to figure out. Many, many questions that I asked my doctors because I was really curious about the disease. I was really curious about why this happens, like what can I do about it? And I didn't really get many satisfying answers. So the the answers were more like, you know, take your medication and that's kind of all you can do really, live your life as best as you can, as you did before. Um, but when I was kind of digging deeper and like, what, what are the things that I can do? Like, what kind of food do you want me to eat? Well, how do you want me to, uh, lead my life? Is there anything I can do to support my body through this time? It, there really wasn't much. And it was more like, oh, uh, like, I don't know what to say to that. Like, sure. Like eat a healthy diet. But then I asked, what does a healthy diet look like? What, like, what does this even mean? And then, oh, you know, like not too fatty, but otherwise, you know, <laughs> so it, it wasn't, there, there was nothing behind it. And they, they also didn't have these answers and it makes sense because they're not trained in that. So it's just a different kind of expertise you would need to have to answer these questions. But that then led me to really dig deeper myself, do a lot of research um reaching out to other 
professionals who would have more answers in those fields, like nutritionists, dietitians, um, functional medicine practitioners, or like alternative medicine practitioners. And yeah, kind of kind of snowballed from there where I got so interested in the field that I also um, got certified as a health coach just for not with the intention to work in that field really just at the time I still had a job and I wanted to learn more about that so I could just apply it to myself a bit more and just find out what are the areas where um, people can get help like what 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 is the big picture of you if you think about health because yeah there's like the autoimmune system but like you can't really treat it in isolation there isn't even doctors who focus on the immune system like all the doctors I went to were specifically looking at my liver specifically looking at my gut but there wasn't anyone who was thinking about my immune system as a whole so mm -hmm. looking at what is big, big picture health like what are the symptoms in our the, the systems in our body how do they work together like how does the immune system even become dysfunctional and an autoimmune disease happens like the, all these questions kind of drove me to take matters into my own hand if you want and yeah become a certified coach eventually also become a certified um ARP coach so an autoimmune uh protocol coach to find out a bit more about the different things that you can do specifically for autoimmune diseases um what like lifestyle protocols look like and things like that Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, you really dove in, um, <laughs> with research, um, be, you know, becoming certified in a couple of different things. Uh, so what, as you went through, if you were to kind of focus in on the things that made the biggest difference for you, for your, improving your health. And, and I know you said that, you know, it took a while, it took kind of years to like really get, you know, kind of back, um, to the point where you are now. So, you know, what are those pillars, you know, the, the things that you really look back on and can say that made a big difference? Yeah. So it was really, it felt like opening a Pandora's box a bit, because once you start digging, there's just so much information. It was really overwhelming at times. Um, many, many times actually so overwhelming that I took a step back and I was like, you know, whatever, I'm just gonna go back to my life as it was before, make the best out of it. And then eventually I was like, okay, maybe I won't, you know, maybe I will look at a couple of more things and try again, try again, try again. Every time it didn't work out so well, um, kind of lost a bit of hope, then eventually found that hope again, found that optimism and started again. But it took a lot of tries, a lot of trial and error to find out what works and yeah through that I have learned so many things that don't work <laughs> and I yeah it, it's a it was a really painful lesson at the time because when we're going through something like this a health crisis it's really when we have the least capacity to take on this whole research bit and dive into and figure out what are the right things to do it's just the time where we don't be, we can't really deal with that on top but you have to deal with this first before you then decide what you're going to do like somehow you need to find out what the next step is going to be and just because there is so much information it is so overwhelming that can really take a lot of time and it can be so disheartening so frustrating if you don't really find what you're looking for or find often information that's completely contradictory like especially when we're talking like let's let's take diet as an example you know every expert is going to suggest a completely different diet how do you find the diet that works for you like what are the differences why do they all suggest something else the, yeah I, I think I read like I bought five different books or five different books was saying completely different things so <laughs> that was that was a mess but um that also kind of taught me that these are not the steps where you start because it's so overwhelming. First, you have to build the capacity to deal with that stuff. And I didn't have the capacity in the beginning and I still dealt with it. And I felt like I was getting worse and worse. Like it didn't help me at all. It just made everything so much worse to go through this added stress of dealing with changing my diet, that being really, really hard, then feeling like I wasn't doing 
it good enough. I wasn't doing the right approach. I was like changing approaches all the time, trying out different diets, felt worse and worse and worse. And then eventually I took a step back from that. I was like thinking back, why am I even doing this? Like, what, what is the point? Where am I even trying to go? What are my goals? And, and kind of regrouping if you want and working on my mindset a little bit, because at the time, like the little energy that I had left after my diagnosis was by then completely gone and I really had to rebuild that a bit and then I could take on bigger things but I think that taught me the mindset is really the first thing where you have to start because if you have no mental capacity for all of these changes you're not gonna get far Mm -hmm. and I feel like everybody who says they started with diet and it worked immediately and everything was perfect after that I, I doubt that that's true. I doubt that this is really the first thing where I started. It might have felt like the first big thing I did because mental changes, mindset changes can feel really slow and really small. But before you put in that work, I feel like the other work isn't going to pay off. And that's that was a big learning for me. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. Mindset is huge and really underrated, I feel like. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that is that is fascinating that you bring that up as kind of the foundation that you felt like had to be there to then move forward. Um, so I guess how did you get into a healing mindset? You know, were there certain you know practices that you followed? Yeah, I think. It really took a while because I just felt so bad at the beginning. I didn't have that mindset at all. Um, And then the more research I did, the more I kind of understood the, the power that we really have to influence our health ourselves. That's not something that has to simply happen to us, but we can play a big role. We can make the decision to care for our health to kind of direct our lives in a way that does support our health and not keep draining our health and just taking 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 from us and that is something that for me felt really empowering that I can simply make the decision to be mindful about these things to be mindful about where I spend my energy if that is kind of in line with where I want to spend my energy is that in line with my priorities in life my values in life um, and a lot of things I found out were not aligned so that's something where I think shifting to this this like from, away from the illness mindset to a kind of a empowered mindset um, that's one of the biggest changes that I noticed I think otherwise what really helped me was surrounding myself with stories of people who had had success because it also feels like you're the only one who goes through this sometimes and when you do some research most people with autoimmune diseases don't do so well like that's just the the reality for most people there isn't so much of a redemption arc where they come out stronger on the other Mm -hmm. side but also because there's such a big lack of information for a lot of people. Like the information is there, but you have to go and search for it. And many people are also not interested to do that. Mm -hmm. And the ones who are interested for them, it's really hard because seeing that many other people in a similar situation, they have really big health issues that they seem to not be able to overcome. And like doctors who seem to just prescribe more and more medication without helping them live their life in a way that feels good and feels like it's their life still, you know, and not like the the life of this patient who can't really do all the things that they used to do. That feels really frustrating. So surrounding yourself, going like going out and looking for these stories of people who made it, that gives so much optimism also and so much motivation. And it feels like, you know, immersing yourself in this world feels also like you can do it. Like it, it is possible. It's not something that is, it's no longer this, this miracle, you know, some people feel good again, you know, some people are able to turn it around. Some people are able to come out stronger on the other side, not just, not just not worse, but stronger, you know, it, it, it is really something that can make you stronger and that can give you back so much when you 
um, find out the right strategies that work for you. And, and that's something that really helped me also overcome that, just this illness mindset a bit. Right, right. Yeah, to have that hope and that belief that you can get better yeah. is, is really powerful and I think has to be there. And um, it has to be there for a lot of reasons, you know, but if you believe yeah. you can get better, you're going to take steps to, you know, try to get better. Um, so yeah, so mindset was huge for you and 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 diet did play a role, but like how did you find the right way of eating for you? Yeah, so I think one thing I mentioned before was this this overwhelm of different diets that I found that was really frustrating for me. And the question that I had at the time was, how is it possible that so many completely different diets work for many people? Like all of these diets have their their relevance in a way like all of these diets do work for someone otherwise they would recommend them right so somehow they are all good and solid diets but how is it possible that they are so different and why isn't there like a a middle way or or I'm not sure how to ask this question right now but basically I found it strange that a carnivore diet can coexist with a vegan diet where they're completely opposite right but somehow they do work both for some people so what made sense for me at the time was we are not all supposed to eat the same foods like the 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 human you know humans are just so different from each other one by one from the way we like have evolved throughout the years where we grew up where our ancestors came from it makes sense that we kind of adapt to our circumstances and depending on where our ancestors come from that's how our systems have evolved and adapted to the different foods that were there so mm -hmm. someone who grows up in the desert obviously will be used to different foods to someone who grows up in a forest who some to someone who grows up where it's cold and snowy all year round so that made a lot of sense for me you know like we can't it, it won't be one diet that works for all people so somehow it has to be a middle way and somehow I will have to find out what the foods are that I can tolerate and I don't tolerate which will look different for someone else mm -hmm. and what I found out throughout this kind of mental turmoil um, of making sense out of all of these different diets was that there are diets that are called elimination diets that kind of lead you through an elimination phase where you take out different foods that depending on your circumstances. So for me, that was obviously autoimmune conditions. You take out all the foods that could trigger an autoimmune reaction. So foods that would be highly inflammatory, foods that would be um, allergic to a lot of people, foods that tend to cause um, insensitivities insensitivity, or something like that. You would take out all of these foods and for a while, give your body, your gut, the chance to heal because it's not constantly exposed to these tricky foods. And then one by one, you reintroduce them again. And then you can see to which foods you have a reaction and which foods you tolerate. And then you come out at kind of a your own bespoke diet, if you want, where you have tested which foods you tolerate, which foods you don't tolerate. And you have a diet that is very individual perfect for you gives you the the biggest kind of freedom to eat whatever you want as long as you don't get exposed to the foods you know you don't tolerate mm -hmm. and when I found out about that type of diet and the the one that's for autoimmune people for, for people with autoimmune diseases it's called AIP so the autoimmune protocol um, that was something that I had a lot of hopes for so I tried out that diet and eventually it worked but it was a difficult process for me to work through that because I had at that point where I found that diet already such a strained relationship with food that it can be really triggering for people who have a history of disordered eating so because you have so much elimination you have a lot of restriction you have um, you know all this awareness shifted towards 
foods, foods that can be healing, foods that can be harmful. It can be really triggering. For me, I went through a difficult time of um, disordered eating, really where I couldn't process that so well, couldn't handle that so well, um, where I eventually worked with a practitioner and kind of overcome that. And then um, it's also something that now really opened my eyes to how triggering all of these diets can be, you know, all of this eating for health reasons, eating for um, autoimmune health can be extremely triggering to so many people uh, who struggle with food. And that's, that's so many more than we would think. Um, I was really surprised when I found out how many people really do struggle with that. And especially people with chronic health conditions because diet plays a huge role for those. So yeah, that's kind of the, the diet part that I dealt with and other areas that I found out are really important um, kind of physically, if you want to separate them from, from the mind work into the, the physical work would also be movement, of course, and sleep and, and rest and like giving kind of our body the chance to refuel, um, recharge the batteries and kind of where do we get that energy from, right? And like, how do we make sure we sleep well? Because I also had years where I didn't sleep well. I, I slept so little. I had like really chronic insomnia, I felt never rested. So kind of working on that, finding out what can help me overcome that. Um, going from not being able to move my body at all. Like I had, I had times of being really bedridden, like when I started to incorporate movement again, like eventually being able to walk the stairs again, walk, going out for a walk and having more and more energy and how does, yeah, how does movement look like for people who have no energy, right? Like it's it's like a whole big topic you also have to work through and like really, really um, develop this this movement again, develop like motion range, develop strength again to do all the things that, um, yeah, are, are supposed to be helpful and healthful and uh, not necessarily the lowest uh, hanging fruits. So... <laughs> Just like what I mentioned before, right? It's it's these things that when we start out, we don't have the mental capacity to deal with that and the, the energy to deal with that. It's not the best thing to start with. But when you build those mental resources, then you can think about, you know, working on, on movement and exercise, incorporating that back into your life if you're um, kind of physically impacted by your condition, right? Just like diet. It's another thing that can be a lot more difficult than people often think. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, and you know, so critical to have that movement. But yeah, when you are so sick, it's it's hard to figure out how to to start weaving that in. And um, yeah, you know, you only have so much energy to like make yourself the the healthy food and <laughs> try to go for a walk or you know, like yeah, and, yeah you exactly. Know, <laughs> like just you know, and if you're working too. So did you did you quit your job like to sort of get better? Eventually, I did. So yeah. that was kind of when I felt like I had already tried out all of the things that I could think of, and I didn't feel like it had worked. So I was thinking, I simply can't dedicate all the energy that I want to recovering and feeling better because my work at the time was taking up all of my energy. Mm -hmm. It was really, it felt like it was so draining to me. All of my thoughts were constantly circling around work, even when I was done working. And to me, it was just this, this one piece that I knew in my bones that if I stayed in that job, I wouldn't be able to get healthy again, simply because it, it took everything that I had and I didn't have anything left for um, working on my health. So that was a big thing that came out of working with my coach also to find out um, where do my priorities lie in life? Like, is that job really as important to me as I thought it would be? And at the time I, well, actually when I, when I started in, um, yeah, when I started working in that job, it was the first job I had out of university. So I did my bachelor's, I did my master's. I worked exactly in the, the company I wanted to work at had exactly the job I always wanted to work. I thought like I was living my dream, you know, I was so excited about this. And it was horrifying to then find out that that didn't work for me. 
and also that kind of my priorities have shifted along the way and only because I had what I always thought I wanted to have it wasn't what I wanted anymore because it was harming me and it it kind of distracted me from the things that were actually important to me in life so that took a lot of time to process and to then make the decision to quit that job and yeah, yeah focus on myself for a while but then also go into a completely different direction career-wise and uh, yeah it was like another kind of big thing that happened during that time yeah yeah I mean that takes a lot of self discovery and exploration and courage to yeah to go look this dream that you know I've always had is is not you know the right thing for me or and it's not ultimately what I want and to kind of untangle yourself from all of that is is difficult I imagine um so Zinnia, like if you were to do things over again, kind of looking back, because because you you have healed um, beautifully, uh, what would you do differently, though, if you could go back? I think the one thing I was really upset with myself about for a really long time is that I somehow I had this absurd. Um, believe that I needed to do this for myself I needed to do this alone and I needed to figure out everything for myself on my own and not ask people for help not uh, accept help when people offered it because I felt like somehow that would make me stronger somehow asking for help would make me weak or um, signal other people that I was weak that I needed the help and that helped me back for a really long time. So I think the biggest thing I would do differently if I would do it over would be not just asking for help more, but kind of accepting that other people can add value during this difficult point in life and just let that happen. So my biggest turning point was when I started working with the coach at the time, because I felt like I... I dug a hole for myself that was so deep that I couldn't come out on my own anymore. And it was really my last resort to then reach out the hand and ask someone for help, someone who kind of knew what I was going through, who could relate to that and who could lead me through it, lead me out through it and, and forward. So I wouldn't feel like I was still stuck and I was kind of going backwards and I couldn't see the light anymore. I couldn't see the way anymore. And I didn't need to wait that long. Like, I, I have no idea why I waited that long, but it was really at the time I was like, okay, I have zero other options. Now I will ask for help. Yeah. And that uh, was unnecessary. So I think that was the biggest thing that I regretted and what I would do differently, definitely, because there are so many people who want to help and um, who who can help just by being there for someone. You don't need to feel... So alone when you're going through this, like having this diagnosis is already isolating enough and we don't need to make it harder on ourselves by feeling like we have to now figure this out for ourselves. And it is why I became a coach eventually, because I felt like I really wanted someone on my side, but I didn't know who to ask. And now I know that there are a lot of coaches, but at the time I, I couldn't see that and I couldn't reach out and and ask somehow but I know firsthand how valuable that is and uh, yeah that's why I became a coach and why I hope I can help other people who have a similar experience and help them before they feel so lost and like I felt so yes yeah 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 absolutely and I think you bring a lot of empathy to being a coach because of where you've come from Absolutely. Yeah. I imagine. Yeah. I kind of walked in their shoes. Um, and so, you know, tell us how you're feeling today. Kind of what's the, 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 the story arc is <laughs> that you, how do you feel today? Yeah. So I, I mean, I feel pretty great. I, I think I can say that <laughs> yeah. I have definitely 
um, I can't remember the last time I felt as good as I'm feeling now. And that is like even long before I was diagnosed with a disease. And the thing is, I still do take some medication. So sometimes people are surprised and then they're like, oh, but like you didn't really heal. But the thing is, medication can have so many side effects. It can still yeah. really impact our lives so negatively. For me, it doesn't do that anymore. It did for the longest time, right? But it, I feel like I haven't just recovered from my autoimmune symptoms, but also from the side effects. Like medication doesn't have to be this big burden. Now mm-hmm. I feel like I, I don't think I would feel any differently if I didn't take medication anymore. And that for mm-hmm. me is the best possible scenario. Like as long as this doesn't impact me negatively, mm-hmm. why is it such a big deal? And mm-hmm. I have so much energy. I feel like I, you know, I'm not held back in any way anymore by either my disease or the medication. There's nothing that I can't do right now. And that's probably the biggest thing for me where I can kind of decide, you know, like, how how do I feel? Is there anything that holds me back? Anything that I can't do because of my disease or because of the medication and and currently there isn't and that's something that I wasn't able to say for a lot of years so that's really how I define health right I have whatever I want I know exactly what I want to do that's that's another thing so during this whole journey I learned what is important to me in life what are the things where I want to direct my energy to and like how do I want to lead my life so I have figured that out for myself which is also a big win that I feel like this whole journey brought with because a lot of people who have never dealt with a difficult time like this, they haven't figured this out for themselves. So in that sense, this whole ordeal can also be a bit of a gift um, once you come out stronger on the other side. Yeah, right, right. You get so much more clarity along the way. Yeah, for sure. Um, well, Zinnia, what is maybe one thing that listeners could do to help them start feeling better? I feel like now that I explained what I would have done differently, mm-hmm. I do have to say here, just ask someone for help. Like if it doesn't have to be a coach, right? It can be someone who like, I don't know, a close friend or a family member who really wants to help, like tell them how they can help you, you know, how they can support you. If you want them to look at information with you, if you want them to just listen to you, you know, if you want to be able to offload on them, whatever it is, ask someone for help. And if you want to ask a coach for help, I mean, I think that's the best idea. Obviously, that is literally why I became a coach because there's so much these people can help with and they can really take your hand and like lead you through the whole process you, nobody has to do this alone and if you do want to ask me for help um i do have i do offer a free coaching call which you can book on my website so um my i want to say my door is always open but we're in a virtual world so <laughs> my phone lines are always open my my zoom um, meeting room is always open so um yeah if if someone wants to chat about their personal situation or how a coach could help, um, I would be more than happy to help. Great. Yeah. Fantastic. And we will have the information on um, how to find you and, um, and connect with you in the show notes for sure. Um, Well, Zinnia, thank you so much for coming on to share your beautiful story. It is it's inspiring and um, you are passing along the hope that you so desperately were looking for when you were feeling um, so bad. So um, know that people will, will hear this and and they'll be inspired um, and, and hopefully ignite that hope in them as well. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you so (laughs) much for giving me the opportunity to get that out. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's been um, an honor and a pleasure to chat with you today. So thank you. And with you. (laughs) 